Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to the JCC of the East Bay, and thank you all for coming out tonight. Now I have the honor of introducing our speakers for tonight. On the far side is Lloyd Morgan. He is an electronic engineer by training with 38 years of industrial experience to the vice presidential level, a member of international science organizations, the Bioelectromagnetic Society, and senior research fellow of the Environmental Health Trust. Scientific advisor, EM radiation research, and investigator of a childhood leukemia cluster. And also a columnist for Power Watch and a brain tumor survivor. His latest science paper, Estimating the Risk of Brain Tumors from Cell Phone Use, published Case Control Studies, is available online from Pathophysiology Reports that the international studies on the risk of brain tumors from cell phone use has a systematic protective skew that result in an und underestimation of the risk of brain tumors. He is a co-author on two previously published epidemiological papers, long-term use of cell phones and brain tumors, increased risk associated with the use. This paper was awarded one of the top 10 articles in 2007 in the Journal of Occupational and Environmental Medicine. And a new electromagnetic exposure metric, high frequency voltage transients associated with increased cancer incident in teachers in a California school. He is the lead author of the report, Cell Phones and Brain Tumors, 15 Reasons for Concern, which was widely distributed to the media and governmental officials August 2009. Cell phones, what, do, what does the epidemiology tell us? Uh, this is all uh, peer-reviewed science. Uh, if you would like to look it up, and I can give you citations for everything. Long-term heavy cell phone users have multiple health problems. If Deborah's already told you about uh, parotid gland uh, tumors. Acoustic neuromas is a nerve that goes from your ear to your brain. Uh, malignant brain tumor speaks for itself, reduced sperm count. Um, uh, memory loss, insomnia, DNA damage. There's also another uh, brain tumor, it's called a meningioma, the tumor of the meninges, which is also a risk from cell phone use. In 1945, there was a bomb that went off in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And the survivors were, were uh, studied for many, many years following that. And they found no increase in brain tumors after a very long period of time when they'd been finding many other cancers until 40 years after the fact. You have a very long latency time. So between exposure and diagnosis can average 40 years. So this is a population here that, uh, uh, that's generally in the, in the public mode. Uh, there's been no increase in brain cancer yet until there's 10 years of heavy use. And in that case, every single cell phone study, whether industry funded or otherwise, has found a risk for brain cancer with more than 10 years of cell phone use. A little bit about what the studies are. They're called case control studies. A case are, is somebody with a brain tumor. And a control is somebody without a brain tumor. But they are otherwise matched by uh, gender, age, region where they live and so on. So they're very similar. And then they're asked questions about their cell phone use and also additional questions about various confounders such as cordless phone use, smoking, ionizing radiation like x-rays and so on. And when you crank the numbers, you get a relative risk. You can break these studies into three, uh, three groups. There are what I call the early studies. There were six of them. Five of them were industry funded. Uh, but they were too early to find a risk. And in fact, the one that was not industry funded was the National Cancer Institute study. Uh, and there was an internal debate within the National Cancer Institute. Let's not do the study yet. We can't find anything. But they were forced to proceed anyway. Uh, we also have then a set of Swedish studies uh, that are independent of industry funding, led by uh, Dr. Lennart Ardell. And then finally, we have an interphone study. This is a very large study involving 13 countries, but not the United States. It has substantial industry funding. 
Um, it defines a user as someone who used a phone for once a week for six months. So think about that. I smoke one cigarette for a week for six months. Do I have a risk for lung cancer? It also has a systemic underestimation of risk. That is, every single result reported in the Interphone study is the risk is higher than what they report. So this is a, a study, and it's really the only study, where you have on the left children who started using, that is, teenagers or younger, who started using a cell phone, have uh, a 420% increased risk of brain cancer from cell phone use and something over 300% increased risk from cordless phone use. And yes, cordless phones are about the same risk as cell phones. But comparing that to adults, it's still, there's a 50% increase and a 30% increase, still very real. You certainly don't want a percent increase of brain cancer for anyone. The reason children are so much more at risk is their cells are still dividing. There's far more absorbed energy in their brains. And this is true of other carcinogens just as well. If you start smoking at eight years of age, you have a far greater risk of lung cancer than if you started smoking at 30. The risk of high-grade brain cancer, as if though brain cancer is not bad enough, I can guarantee you the high-grade brain cancer is far worse. For every 100 hours of use, there's a 4% risk, in increased risk. Ellie's husband used his cell phone for 10,000 hours. So you can just add 4% and 4% and 4% and so on. Or for every year of use, there's an 11% increase. Not everybody's going to get a brain tumor from long-term cell phone use, no, no more than people that smoke 30, uh, for 30 years will get lung cancer. But there will be a substantial population. The cell phone radiation only penetrates one side of your head. With a child, it actually gets a little beyond midbrain. But, but if you're holding a cell phone to your right ear, it, the radiation is totally absorbed by the time it reaches, the, before it reaches the midbrain. And that's, if you're holding a cell phone immediately against your head, that 70% of all the power being radiated is being absorbed by your brain, and only 30% of it is used to talk to a cell tower. And you can see, once again, uh, cordless phone risk is also uh, right there. So here we have the Hardell results for greater than 10 years of use or greater than 2,000 hours of use. And you can see again well over a 250% uh, increased risk from, from cell phones and well over 100% for cordless phones. So what do we know so far with the Interphone study? Well, there's no, over, uh, no overall increased risk with average use of two hours a month for, for less than seven years. In fact, you will find that in almost every single Interphone study, regular use, remember that's once a week for at least six months, they find statistically significant protection from a brain tumor, which they themselves admit is because of the design flaws in the study. But after a decade, you have a significantly doubled risk for the heaviest users, which is only about half an hour a day. Uh, there's this systemic underestimation of risk. Virtually every result they show. So if you underestimate to the point that you have protection, when you increase it to where, if there's no risk, you're not going to find, you'll find an equal number of, of relative risk above and below one that is slightly protective and slightly at risk. But, but they're, they're consistently below one. But, but when, you, when you adjust these, and it is adjustable, I'm working on a paper right now for that, you will find that there is an increased risk that it begins to approach what the Hardell studies show. So this is just a comparison of the industry-independent Hardell studies to the industry-funded interphone studies for greater than 10 years of use. So, you, but the interphone study, again, every result is too low. So you can just raise that up and it will be on the order of where the Hardell studies is once the correction factors have been applied. As Deborah said, nearly 90% of adults use cell phones today, a number that is eight times the rate that it was in 1990. The interphone study that considered cell phone use was in, was in 2000 to 2004 when the actual data was being collected, and it's no longer relevant. 
Now, it was supposed to have been published in 2005, but it was only finally, and only 40% of the results so far, was published in May of this year. Five years delayed. And the reason is they didn't, there was a series of the researchers who didn't want to, re, to publish anything. And there was a big internal fight and finally the, the new director of the of IARC, the International Agency of Research in Cancer, said you will publish. Uh, the technologies and the use patterns keep changing, strengthening the need for precaution. Now, industry has a series of myths that you will often hear if they were uh, speaking tonight. I'm sure they would fall on these. They say, the weight of the evidence says there is no problem. Well, this isn't true, but we move their studies from the weight of the evidence, and there's overwhelming that there is a risk for brain cancer and all these other diseases. The other one they love is, there's no known mechanism. Now, that's fundamentally anti-science. Data trumps mechanism. But we don't have a mechanism for smoking and lung cancer. These are, these are, just, these are just myths they throw out, sound bites, if you will. And then also, with so many people using cell phones, if there were a risk for brain tumors, we should see an increased incidence, but there is no in, in, increase incidence, and that's true. 80% of brain tumors occur in persons over 60 years of age, who were not the heaviest users at the time, uh, and nobody has used any cell phone for 40 years, much less even 30 years. So there will be, and I asked this question at a science meeting that was about 400 scientists. I said, if cell phones are causing brain tumors, how many people here would say there will not be a pandemic, a tsunami of brain tumors, and not one person raise their hands. Because once you say, if cell phones cause brain tumors, then there will be, long time delay, a tsunami of brain tumors. Thank you.